So good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, Morgan State University School of Global Journalism and Communication family, thank you all for being here for today's Q&A with Mr. Gary Abner. Um, I wanted to recognize our dean, the dean of our school, Dean Wickham, who I believe will be joining us for 
for this talk today too. So thank you also for making it on already for being here. So this morning, we have uh, the distinct honor and pleasure to have a conversation with someone who is just unparalleled in the art of creating high impact opportunities, not only for himself, but also for other creatives of color. Um, so um, our guest speaker today, Mr. Kerry Abner, is a seasoned marketing professional and creative mind committed to impacting culture. He has worked with notable clients, including Google, Red Bull, General Electric, Reebok, Atlanta Hawks. In his current role at Sony Music Entertainment, he works to expand the company's marketing and social media strategy by paid advertisement, effective messaging, and um, content strategy. His latest accomplishment included spearheading Sierra's 15 years of goodies campaign, generating more than 13 point three million social media impressions and if that isn't enough he also is founder of a creative marketing agency called Intiku or intelligently cool serving as a catalyst between brands and internet culture so thank you so much Mr. Kerry Abner for being with us this morning hey, hey, what's hey, what's up? Up? thank you for having me Pleasure, my pleasure. And so for my class, uh, Professor Duckett's social media class, please be sure um, to live tweet during this talk. Use the SCOM social hashtag and just share three, two to three um, thought leadership tweets throughout the talk. All right, so what can I call you, Mr. Abner? No, I just call me Carrie, it's all good. Okay, okay. <laughs> please. All right, so can you describe a typical day in the life of a global marketing manager at Sony. Take us through your day. Um, it's a lot of uh, over communicating. It's a lot of, you know, when you're talking about working on a team that is uh, spread out, you know, and, and global, you're talking about uh, lots of emails, lots of saying the same thing, lots of repackaging information, lots of customizing information for specific needs. So um, it's 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 a lot of organized chaos. To be completely to to be completely honest, it's it's uh, it's <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot going on. So um, a typical day is just you know trying to organize yourself one to make sure that you you know that you have the information um a lot of it is getting the information so reaching out and and working with others and other departments to make sure that you're having the most accurate information to put in front of everybody else and then it's distribution and there's a lot of different um back and forth that needs to happen so it's it's a lot of organizing to be honest and a lot of follow-up and a lot of um over communication gotcha yeah. so it's how did you land this job um <laughs> it's a long story but um essentially i uh, i was i was running a, a boutique marketing agency in atlanta um into coup that was uh, based around the idea of connecting uh, black and brown influencers to brands. And through that, I put together a workshop. It was called How to, Do How to Drive Music Discovery Using Social Influencers. And I did that be and I, and I gave that presentation at a at a conference called A3C. So there's a, a conference called All Three Coast um, in Atlanta. It's a hip hop conference. And I knew that that was the one of the biggest times of the year where the people that I felt that I wanted to be in front of, the people who who impacted culture, the people who worked in music, fashion and and art and streaming and all that stuff. I knew that they would be there in tech. Um, so I gave that workshop for free at this conference, hoping that the right people would be in the room or I would, or my title of the, of my workshop would attract the right people to attend. Um, somebody from Sony 
was in the audience that day. I was, you know, kind of going through my idea or my approach to the concept of using influencers to drive music discovery. And I was contacted from that point to to come up to New York and uh, and kind of pitch myself, so to speak. Um, about potentially working with Sony. I, I, I wanted Sony to be my client. I wanted them to be a client of, of mine um, as to my agency. But through that conversation, I ended up more so being um, offered a position. I offered to apply to in a position, and then I kind of went through the, through the process. It sounds like the perfect alignment of preparation, meeting an opportunity. Can you walk us through the process of how you prepared? Yeah. Um, preparation side is, I think it's, it's, it's all the years of me trying stuff. You know what I mean? It's, I've, it's all the years of curiosity. It's all the years of failure um, and success. You know, I, I've tried things that worked. I've tried things that didn't. Um, uh, it, yeah, it's it's the preparation part is a is a never ending cycle of of effort and um and and trying to figure it out. The opportunity became, uh, I guess, obvious to me or or available to me once I continuously put the energy of what I was trying to accomplish into the universe. I knew a few things. Preparation was, I know that I wanna work in, I know that I wanna use my talent, my time, my knowledge to make an impact on the representation of minorities in media and marketing material, right? So I knew that that was my purpose work. That's that's, That's how I define my space for myself. So once I had that, I knew that I wanted to work in areas that impacted culture the most. So music, um, fashion, art, tech, anything where I saw people really making an impact on the narrative of of ultimately black culture. Um, So I guess the consistency of that North Star and me shooting so many shots in that direction, I eventually just landed one. I think that's what what it comes down to. So I think the preparation is knowing what you want, identifying what you want, identifying where your guardrails are so that you're so that you're not so you that you don't just, you know, waste time chasing two two rabbits, so to speak. Um, decide where you want to where you want to shoot your shot and just and just keep shooting and try different ideas and put yourself out there and you know combat the fear of judgment and and you know being judged for failure oh that didn't work publicly you know what i mean but uh yeah i I think the opportunity comes from consistency and persistence so to speak What's the best piece of career advice that you would give students? Um, the best piece of career advice I would give students is <sighs> learn the art or, or study emotional intelligence. Um, I know that's an offbeat answer. That's not probably what you expected, but I think Emotional intelligence is probably the most impactful study that I've ever been a part of personally. I didn't, I, it, it, um, it just opened my mind up to concepts of, uh, time management, um, uh, productivity, um, controlling my, controlling and managing my emotions, self-awareness. Um, there's so many discipline. Um, there's so m- empathy. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many words that, I, that come to mind that really have helped my career path 
and and that's they're not the hard skills of like you know study this and research that and it's more so about understanding yourself first and applying the best version of that to areas that you're most passionate about and i think once you find the intersection of self-awareness discipline time management empathy coupled with the intersection of things that you just naturally love to do um you'll be in a very special place of work not feeling like work <laughs> i i what i do i could do every day because i would do it every day if i wasn't if i wasn't being paid for it yeah. you know what i mean i naturally i listen to music all day i i am active on social media um you know i i I watched the Breakfast Club interview, you know what I mean? Like all these things are a part of my life already. So for me to be paid to do it, <laughs> it's it's not a bad gig. Sometimes it's hard to make those connections of what I'm good at, find my voice, package it in a way, package it in a way that it's aligned with the opportunity. How do you, how would you coach a student on how to prepare for this? Because it sounds like you're saying it's not a traditional route always. You have to be willing to branch out and even, even fail at times. So can you share um, maybe a lesson that you had? What's the hardest lesson you've had to learn professionally that actually moved you closer to self-discovery? Um, I would say one of the hardest lessons I learned was not to marry your own idea. I think that as a creative, naturally, we're very excitable about ideas. We're very excitable about this thing is cool, right? And, and we want to pursue that because it's cool and i think that's a that's a very knee-jerk instinct and you know instinctual reaction to a light bulb moment right but i think not falling in love with that initial excitement because the practicality of execution is going to come into play there's there's like okay but how right and it all it all looks good written on paper when you're like mapping it out i'm going to take this step step one step two step three until the implementation in the world comes into play when other people come into play when you need help or support or you need things created or you need things paid for or you need things to happen in order to, for you to move the needle um it starts to shape itself from idea to physical form and it doesn't always look exactly the way you saw it mm -hmm. and that's not a reason to be discouraged by it it's just this is prototype one because this is what you knew this is the information that you had at the time to get to this point but the the beauty the beauty in that is you've went through the process so now you have that experience and you've only went through it once let's just say right so now you have the experience to try to get you have that experience to try to create version two so i think that um and it continuously gets better from there and i think that the one of the biggest lessons i had to learn early because I'm very excitable. You can sell me something off, off an of infomercial because if you make it look cool enough, you know what I mean? But um, I, I learned that not to, like somebody told me this actually, uh, a, a mentor of mine, he told me, don't marry your own ideas. And I didn't get it at first, um, but I understand now because once the execution comes into play, it's, it, it looks a little different than what you started with. 
you once tweeted, craft intentional ideas. How do you do that? Um, intentional to me just means knowing what you want. You know, it's so when I say craft intentional ideas, it's like, what do you want to happen? I, I start all of my campaigns or ideas or things with the end result in mind. It's like, okay, well, what do I want to happen at the end of all this? And because if I don't identify that, I, there's a potential that I can get to the end and not be fulfilled. And that's, that's, a, that's across the board. This is not even talking about work no more. This is just, what's the end goal? And I think if you know what you want in the end, And you're and you would be happy to receive that. It's it's about reverse engineering the steps that you think would get you to that point. And uh, that's what I mean by craft intentional ideas. Just have an intention about where you're going, but also have enough detachment from it to allow the universe to bring it to you. organically mm -hmm. because if you set your intentions out and you work towards those intentions and you allow the detachment to take place to where you take your hands off the wheel and have faith that your effort towards your goal will bring your goal to you but not be so rigid in the way that you get to it I think that's what I meant by that tweet. That was a long way to answer about that tweet. That was great. <laughs> Three essential skills students need to navigate a career in the industry. A little bit of a um, No, nah, it's uh, resourcefulness. Um, knowing how to, knowing where to pull things together, um, creativity, just uh, thinking outside the box and, and, and not scared to try new things. And then um, grit to, to get through it because um, it looks cool but it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work to um, to pull some of these things off. Uh, and it's frustrating. It's really frustrating, actually. Um, so I think you need grit, creativity, and uh, resourcefulness to, like, really, to really make, to really, like, keep yourself, you know what I'm saying? In, in line with 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 making it in the industry, so to speak. All right, so I'll ask about a couple more questions and then I'm gonna go through the chat and see what questions we have from people who are viewing. Um, tell us about a time when you had to pivot professionally. And what did you learn from that experience? Um, so I pivoted when I came when I when I joined the music industry. Um, I was originally in the brand partnership space, the agency space. Um, I pivoted to the music industry off of just gut and feeling like these same skills apply. I'm just applying them to things that I understand instinctually, like music and culture and things of that nature. So um, that experience is not easy. It's a, it's a very big learning curve. Um, I've dealt with imposter syndrome, the idea of uh, I don't belong, the idea of how did I get here, the idea of why is my voice valued at this table 
being one of the uh, one of the few black men uh, in in a particular department at at different stages in my career uh, has been very special to me, but it's also been very uh, Uh, it's challenging because I feel in some way that what I say seemingly represents an entire race of people mm. because that's how, because I'm the black voice, you know what I mean? I'm the, I'm the person, you know what I mean? To be like, that's not a good idea. And this is why, you know what I mean? To kind of bring up those cultural nuances. Um, but yeah, pivoting and, and feeling like, in, in, like imposter syndrome is, 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 a, is a special, it's an interesting feeling because you, you've done all the right things and all the work and all the, all the effort that, brought you to this point only to realize when you get there you're almost like how did I get here you know what I mean and that's when you start to realize how valuable your personal experience is and your culture is and your surroundings and the people that you know and the things that you watch and the music that you listen to, you start to realize how valuable that is because not everybody shares that same experience. Yeah. Switching gears a little bit, I want to, because we have um, social media, digital marketing students on here, what role does social media and digital marketing play in the success of your work? Uh, it plays a lot. Um, uh so like as far as tactics go right you're, now we're talking about like the 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 tangible things right i mean it's i spent a lot of time trying to during my stint of entrepreneurship right um which i was pushed into my, the the idea of me i i, I was working somewhere out of college, got laid off, got pushed into entrepreneurship. I'm not, got pushed into there. <laughs> I didn't quit my job on some like rogue stuff. Got pushed in there and was just like, okay, let me try to figure something out. I knew that communication was changing. So I knew enough to say like, okay, well, I got a computer, I have a phone, I have an internet connection. I have a PayPal account, I have a Gmail account, and there's YouTube and Google. I can probably make some money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, social media being free with the level of attention that is on social media is a very big arbitrage for people who want to build and try things. Um, so social media, so I spent so much time trying to run my own Facebook ads, pop up my own Shopify store, create my own pitch deck using Canva, um, look up how to, you know, how to create a proposal using HelloSign and YouTube. And I spent so much time trying to fend for myself and trying to make sure that I was eating and my rent was paid because I ultimately I, you know, I was fending for my, you know, I was, I, my livelihood was on the line, right? I spent so much time in that space that I, and this is me investing in myself. I spent money to buy courses that, you know, people's online courses who, who was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a Facebook master and I made this much money. I done bought people's courses. I ain't going to front. Some worked, some didn't. Um, I spent so much time in that space that eventually the, the skills 
of me learning it applied themselves so heavily to what I do as far as understanding Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, and knowing how they work and knowing how people communicate on them that I was able to articulate that to people who don't live in that space all the time, right? And there's traditional leadership who look at that instinctively as like a kid's game, the young people's game, right? Social media is a young people's game. And it's not, it's it's the literal culture shift of communication. There was radio, television, newspapers. Now there's internet streaming, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same concept, it's just on different platforms. And I think that we undermine the the upside of having global access through our computer. And I think that's where digital and social has played such a big part in my career development, because I, I think that I'm still learning, but up until this point have applied um, how to communicate through those channels. What is the art of creating brand partnerships? Give us a crash course. Um, for one, uh, any partnership is about mutual benefit, right? And I think sometimes as creatives or as the person with the idea or the platform or the new clothing line or the new event or the new coffee <laughs> you know, brand or whatever that is that you're creating, we think that our thing is so cool that brands should just want to be involved with it. Um, and you should feel that way. But mutual benefit comes into play when, well, what does the brand want, right? So what does the brand want? The brand wants access to an audience. The brand wants alignment with cool things. The brand wants potential new customers. They want to grow their subscriber list. They want to grow their followers. They want to sell more products or services, essentially. So it's our job to find the intersection of what exactly does my thing do for the brand and it doesn't have, what does my ecosystem do for the brand? So I think that's the first thing, like understanding and finding the mutual benefit. Um, but then it's having a clear mission statement because sometimes brands will align with you based off of you trying to pursue the same things that they wanna pursue, right? If you're trying to create beauty products because you want more women of color to feel comfortable in their skin and, and more beautiful or whatever, whatever that, that mission is for you. Um, there's a brand who believes in that too. And because you're the, you're the grassroots person and the next big thing, they'll align with you based off that. So having a clear mission, um, having the business sense to know like, you know, this is what we stand for. This is our purpose. This is what we're trying to get accomplished. This is what we've done so far. Here's the proof of that. This is how big our newsletter subscriber list is. This is how big our followership is. This is the demographic that we're speaking to and that engages with us. There are women between, you know, 25 and 34 who live mostly in New York, Atlanta, and Florida. And like understanding some of the data and the analytics behind that. I don't want to get too far because it gets a little nerdy, so to speak. But like there's tools like Facebook Insights, Instagram Insights. These social media tools have insights to tell you who is engaging with the content that you're putting out. And that information serves you best if you're able to transfer it over to 
some sort of document, which could be a pitch deck, to say like, this is what we are, this is who we are, this is what we stand for, this is what we're trying to get accomplished, this is what we've done, this is who we're talking to, this is how, well, this is our numbers, this is how you can engage with us, contact us. Mm -hmm. I think that's a clear breakdown of at least a brand saying, I want to know more. They may not be like, I'm going to give you the $50,000 check off, off today, but they'll say, Come in for a meeting. We get this. You know what I mean? I think that's important. I think we should we should we should celebrate the small wins of getting to the next conversation. You know what I mean? It's not always like, damn, I didn't walk out of there with that check I wanted. No, you, you might have not have. But they want you to come back next week to talk to their VP or they want to put you in touch with somebody. If they're not the right person, they want to put you in touch with somebody who is the right person. I think we should celebrate those opportunities just as much as we celebrate the check because that's the process that doesn't get talked about enough. Everybody sees the end result because that's what we post on Instagram. That's the part that we, oh, oh, we just signed a big deal. Hooray. But you didn't tell everybody the three months that it took of communication and emails and, and no, and can you revise this and edit that? And it's a lot of work before that part happens. Sorry, I'm just, I'm rambling at this point. Yeah. <laughs> It's great because I feel like it gives us a full circle moment because you had to do those exact same things, those steps. Sony to take an interest in you to say, hey, come in and pitch us in a meeting, which also landed and turned into the job that you have now. So I love it because it kind of just uh, cyclically shows us how you've been able to navigate a career. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss to one of my students in the chat, Kara, and she's going to just kind of read off some of the questions that we have from the today. Good morning. Okay, cool. Good morning. Um, you mentioned a mentor. How important have they been in your career and have you used them? Uh, yes. I mean, um, Yes, I I have I have people that I consult with as far as trying to cut down the amount of time it takes me to figure it out myself. Um, I think what I what I say is like my mentors is I have like secondhand mentors as well, like people that I've never met, but I I, I watch their interviews, I read their books. Um, I uh, seek out information that they've put out publicly for me to consume. Um, but I can't say that I've had like one specific long lasting mentor uh, throughout my career. Uh, not because I don't want one, but because I feel like the mentor mentee relationship is very special and I think it's very, it should be very organic. It's built off trust, it's built off respect. Um, and I think sometimes that I come off so prideful in my, like the way I carry myself, like I have it together not because I do, but because that's just how I carry myself, that sometimes I might have missed a mentor, a real mentor mentee opportunity because they probably thought that I didn't need it. Okay. If that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, being the narrative of Black culture, do you feel your company allows full creativity around your intent or diversity? or diversity is still prominent in what you do? Um, I think like most companies, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work 
to be done in the in the diversity space. Mm-hmm. However, my company, yes, they 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 are very supportive and very aware and very um, you know, uh, um, I guess the word is again supportive of of understanding the voice that I bring to the table, which is of black culture, right? So when I'm when I'm in there speaking about why this is a good idea or why it's not a good idea and why and or if I'm putting together an initiative that specifically is about or around how do we acknowledge the protests that are happening um, in the black community and for the black community uh, they're very open and very receiving and very um, proactive in their approach to how they get involved with that. So I don't know if I'm answering your questions completely, but yes, my company is, um, allows the space for full creativity, but it always comes back to, and it, as it should, a strategic, well thought out plan of how, why, where, and is this something that, and how can we all collectively stand by it so that it's more powerful than if I was to just go rogue and try to do it myself, so to speak. Mm. Okay, I think you kind of answered this just a little. Um, How are you able to navigate the pressure of being one of the only black people in your workplace while making decisions that may impact a large group of people? Um, I think it goes back to honesty, empathy, and um, respect and boundary. I think that um, there's a lot of pressure being one of the few Black voices um, in any room, right? Because you're automatically seemingly voicing the opinion of an entire group of people because that's what gets repeated once you're 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 gone from that conversation right um but the way i navigate that and handle that is just being just being authentic to myself being honest and being um but also being very clear that I don't represent, you know what I mean? I, this, this, this is my personal experience, you know what I'm saying, as a 34-year-old Black man. Like, this is, this is my perception of the world. This is how I view the world um, th- through the things that I went through. But I can't say that the, the 34-year-old Black guy sitting next to me had that same experience. So I'm very clear on I'm not speaking for everybody black <laughs> i'm speaking for myself right. but um but i do keep in mind the greater good of like don't don't mishandle the likeness of people that i represent mm-hmm. don't mishandle the likeness don't mishandle the intellectual property don't in, don't mishandle the culture don't mishandle the respect and boundaries that we that we've set for ourselves and i and i think i'm 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 pretty self aware and culturally aware enough to know the 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 macro but um i keep it very personal to myself as well speaking of personal how do you what is your self care ritual um i meditate I, I like I I think there's so many and I know medita- meditation at first feels weird and it sounds funny and it's like you just sit there for 20 minutes and don't think about nothing like I, I get it <laughs> I get it um because I felt the same way but I think that I got to a point in my life to where uh 
I started going to therapy and therapy gave me the tools to, of self-awareness and emotional intelligence that I didn't have before. So I understand when I, I, I'm aware when I'm overstimulated and um, with so many things pulling for our attention, our phones, our emails, notifications, social media, family, friends, work, being black, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's so many things that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that take a toll on my mind and my emotion, whether good or bad, that I try to create space for me to be still, be still in thought, be still in movement and to quiet my mind just a little bit and to like process my thoughts. I think sometimes we, we're so, we wake up and just get right to it. And we're, we're, we wake up in a reactionary state versus taking the first hour to, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to yourself to be like, okay, no phone, no email, no nothing. I need to meditate. I need to pray. I need to read. I need to drink tea. I need to stretch. I need to exercise. Like, Right. things help me so much because it feels like I'm pouring into myself first and then I can go service the world with everything else that's going on. But if I, if I wake up consistently servicing the world first, after a while that it, I have, I, I, I have nothing. You can't pour from an empty cup. My grandma said. <laughs> okay. Um, Referencing back to those conversations that you said we should celebrate if they necessarily didn't come out of the meeting with a big contract or whatever, how do you turn those conversations into that $50,000 check? Preparedness. You know what I mean? I think that um, the conversations are just a, a negation of like either you're headed in the right direction or you're headed in the wrong direction. If people are receptive to what you're saying and they're understanding and they're, you know, when you present yourself, there's a limited amount of questions. They're not, you know, they understand, like you're bringing the information to the table that anybody would need to make a, a, a decision. Um, that's what those conversations are about, but to get over that hill, it's about preparedness and being being clear about what you want, being clear about what you offer, being clear about your value and the value of what you're bringing, which should exceed the price that you're asking for. Exactly. Um, preparedness is how you get to that. Okay. Long story. I have two more questions in the chat. How have the times that we're living in now impacted your work? For example, the protest. It's very hard. It's very hard because I think what some people don't understand is that I don't get a I don't get to take a break from being black. And I think that because I work in social and because I work in digital. I believe in psychological warfare. I'm a marketer, so I understand creating the videos and creating the copy and creating the images that are made to provoke action, right? I'm creating these things because I want you to listen to music or buy tickets or watch a video, right? And um, because I understand that, you gotta understand. You gotta understand the fact that I'm being, I'm consuming black death on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Watch police kill black and brown people with no consequence that turns into protests and turns into rioting and turns into these very high intense emotions. 
and in some way I'm expected to still perform at the level that everybody else is performing be, and they don't have to live that reality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you don't live the reality of being black and watching black death being served to you all day long and having the wherewithal in your mind and in your spirit to shut that out and still deliver a presentation, still create your plan, still be strategic, still send emails and meet deadlines and do all these things that people never have to consider. So it's, it's very hard. Um, and that's where self-care comes into play. I think that's very important that you mentioned therapy in your self-care because therapy has had a stigma on it in the black community for a very long time. And particularly coming from a black man to mention therapy is, is just perfect. Um, another question is, what would you say to someone who is interested in a similar career as you, but does not know how to jumpstart it? <sighs> um, start somewhere. Um, and I know that, that that's, not the, that's not a good answer, um, but it's probably the best answer I have is start somewhere. I mean, there's a, if you're talking about music specifically, right? You're talking about, there's a, everybody knows a singer or a rapper or somebody who needs support in some way. So again, identify what you're good at naturally, whether that's being a PR person, a dot connector, um, a researcher, a marketer, a social media person, whatever you do, a videographer, a photographer, whatever it is that you do, find somebody or something that you feel is worth pouring your time and energy into and try some stuff, start somewhere, try some stuff, be like, okay, cool. We're going to, we're going to shoot this. We're going to shoot, we're going to shoot this video of you and we're going to chop it up into 60 second clips because that's how big Instagram takes video. Unless you go to IGTV. Um, we're going to chop it up into 60 second clips. We're going to make five clips and we're going to drop them over the course of a week. We're going to drop one every day or we're going to drop one on every Friday. And our goal is to increase your followers by 5,000 followers. If that's the goal, that type of stuff, that case study that you'll get from that, um, the results that you'll get from that is something that you can then read and say, this worked or it didn't work and why. Yeah. And I think that that's the type of information that you need to then go show somebody else in the, in the, in the building to say, well, look, I don't have a whole, whole bunch, you know, of experience, but there was this artist th that's from my hometown and he started here. And with these actions that I took to help him, it got him here. Right. That's more, that's more valuable than your your college resume, and that's no disrespect to mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to college, <laughs> but that's more that's more that's more valuable because you went out there and did the real world simulation of what happens in the building. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get to everybody's questions. Um, Mr. Carey, the last piece of advice you want to give students. Um, go to YouTube and um, type in Think and Grow Rich. There's, hmm. a, there's a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, it's, it's, it's a long book. Um, but if you want to listen to it on audio in chunks, 
You can go to YouTube, type it in. This old guy is going to get up there and he's going to be talking all this crazy stuff. But if you really listen to what he's saying and try to apply it to your own life, there's the, the tactics and like the buttons and the, the things that you got to push and things to get things done. People can always teach you that you can you, people can always teach you that. What they can't teach you is faith, empathy, mm-hmm. discipline, mm-hmm. love, respect, right. credibility, influence. People can't teach you those things. You have to self-analyze and break old habit patterns and really remember there's a Jay-Z line that says, Hove, remind yourself, nobody built like you. You designed yourself. You have to design yourself into the person that you really inspire to be. Because I can I can sit you down for a couple of hours and show you how to run a Facebook ad. That's why there's a revolving door at all these companies. That's what I mean. Because it's hire people, hire people to sit in the same seat. But the people who really elevate and propel and create opportunities for their own selves and are bigger than the companies that they work for are because they've invested in themselves personally. So my final advice would be like, really listen to that book, man. It changed my life. It's it's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay. The students want to keep in contact with you. Do you have any um, best way to contact you, connect with you, your social media? Oh, yeah. It's Carrie Classic. So K-E-R-R-Y, Classic with a K, K-L-A-S-S-I-C. That's my Instagram. Um, I'm not, I don't really, I'm not really heavy on Twitter, but I got a Twitter. Um, That's probably the best one. All right. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, for being here today, for sharing your wisdom, your expertise, your journey. And um, just thank you for all that you do to pour into creatives of color and to help amplify our voice in these uh, spaces that you, you're traversing in. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you all for joining today. This will be recorded and um, I will kind of share this, like I said, with the school YouTube page. Cool. Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. And then as far as his attendance, are you taking care of that or do we screen capture this? I went through all the participants, Jaden, and got everybody's name. So you're good. (laughs) I just want to make sure. All right. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of the day. All right, y'all.